Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're talking about the protests that turned violent and why gambling on sports just got the go-ahead. Plus, what's on Jupiter's moon, microchips under the skin, and the person who saved two million babies. All that and much more in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Tuesday, May 15th. Thanks to our sponsor, Day in the Life Podcast, where you hear from a variety of guests who share what a day in their lives is really like, like this interview with a former NFL coach. How comfortable are you with hating every day of your life? And this one with a BuzzFeed lifestyle editor. One of the things that surprises me is how many people seem to hate BuzzFeed who still read it all the time. To listen, go to dayinthelifepodcast.com or search Day in the Life wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, you ready for the news? Let's do this. The UN Security Council will be meeting today to talk about the violence at the Israel-Gaza border yesterday. Many of the reports put pictures side by side to show the chaos of protests next to a formal ceremony of VIPs going on at the same time. Because Israel and the U.S. held a celebration, a ceremony for the new U.S. embassy opening up in Jerusalem. While at the same time, the AP reports not that far away, a huge Palestinian protest turned deadly and chaotic. Tens of thousands of Palestinians took part in protests at the border fence, separating Israel from Gaza, which is Palestinian territory. The clashes reportedly turned into the deadliest day at the border since 2014. But exactly how and why did it turn deadly? Well, there are some different takes on that. The Gaza Health Ministry says Israeli army fire killed at least 58 protesters, and more than 2,700 people were hurt in those protests. Syria condemned what it called Israel's massacre against unarmed Palestinians. But Israel and the U.S. blame the militant group who rules in Gaza, called Hamas. They say Hamas pushed people to go places and do things so they would be shot at as a propaganda move. Israeli officials say rioters were throwing pipe bombs and stones at troops. Australia's prime minister also blamed Hamas for this, but France and Britain called on Israel to show more restraint. And France even said the embassy move itself violates international law. Remember, the protests and the ceremony were because the U.S. embassy formally moved to Israel from where it was before in Tel Aviv. First Lady Melania Trump is in the hospital. The White House says she had a medical procedure to treat a benign kidney condition, that it was successful and there were no complications. There aren't a lot of details about the condition or the procedure, but reports say she'll likely stay in the hospital for the rest of the week and then is expected to fully recover and be released. President Trump went by the hospital to visit yesterday. The Supreme Court of the United States has spoken, and it's saying it's okay to gamble on sports. Well, it's okay for states to legalize sports betting if they want. It was a 6-3 to three ruling. The Supreme Court justices decided that the federal law that made it illegal to bet on games in the U.S. is actually unconstitutional, that it violates states' rights to make their own decisions. So, no more. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can go right now and bet on a game. State lawmakers will need to take the steps to legalize it in those states, and some are working on it ASAP. One expert told The Washington Post that 20 to 40 states will probably start allowing some sort of sports betting, and soon. New Jersey is the state that took this case to court in the first place, so it's ahead of the game. When more states likely join this, an estimated $1 billion in gaming revenue is expected each year. So stay tuned. The city council in Seattle just said yes, please, to adding a new tax on big corporations. And that includes one of the biggest, Amazon. TechCrunch reports the new tax means an extra $275 per employee. And the money is meant to help conditions for homeless people in Seattle. Businesses like Amazon are not so thrilled about it. In fact, Amazon protested by just stopping or at least pausing construction of its headquarters expansion in Seattle. Businesses say the new tax sent the message not to try and grow in the city. But others say those same businesses have also meant less affordable housing available. All right, other things people may be talking about today. A dozen more people got sick because of salmonella in some eggs. You might remember from last month when more than 200 million eggs were recalled. They were traced to a facility in North Carolina and a company called Rose Acre Farms, although the eggs were sold under a bunch of different brand names. 
Well, now NBC News reports more people reported getting sick in five different states, mostly on the East Coast, except one in Colorado. In all, the CDC says the number of people affected is now up to 35. You can check the full list of recalled eggs in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com in case you want to double check what's in your fridge. New evidence that could maybe help find new signs of life in space. But it's all from old data. Let me explain. Scientists say they now have evidence that there are plumes of water erupting from the surface of Europa. Europa is Jupiter's moon, and it's covered in ice. Space.com reports scientists have long thought there may be an ocean of liquid water under all that ice, but they didn't really have specific data to back it up. Now they think they do. Strange magnetic signals found in information from an old NASA spacecraft wasn't understood before. Now they say it's those plumes of water. Researchers say future missions to Jupiter's moon could go and get samples of that water and then look for signs of life. Thousands of people in Sweden are putting microchips under their skin as their new ID cards. Business Insider reports about 3,000 Swedish people have taken part over the last three years. They don't have to keep track of things like keys, IDs, or even train tickets. Instead, they have microchips the size of a grain of rice inserted under their skin in a procedure that's sort of like getting a piercing. Then they just have to wave their hand to get into their office, home, or gym. It's happened in other countries too, including the U.S., but in much smaller numbers. Some good news for you. For 60 years now, a guy named James Harrison gave blood every few weeks in Australia, and he became known as the guy with the golden arm. The New York Times says doctors figured out that he had a rare antibody in his blood that's needed to make a new type of medication that's given to pregnant women when needed. Because of that, the Australian Red Cross Blood Service just said that that one person helped save more than 2 million babies from a possible deadly disease. Now at 81 years old, doctors say the guy has to stop donating blood, but he says he's glad to have done what he could for so long. The royal wedding is this Saturday, May 19th, but things are already not exactly going according to plan. People reports Meghan Markle's father was going to walk her down the aisle, but now he's not going to the wedding at all. For one, he had a heart attack six days ago, but he was apparently still planning to come until yesterday. New reports found he had helped stage paparazzi photos of himself getting ready for the wedding and then got paid for it. He says he was trying to control the narrative a bit more, but apparently now he doesn't want to embarrass the royal family by going to the wedding. The statement from Kensington Palace said Meghan was in the midst of a deeply personal moment. Meghan's mom, though, is still expected to be there. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you get value out of this show, please be sure to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, or just share it with your friends. I always appreciate you helping to spread the word. If you want to read more about any of the news stories mentioned in today's episode, go to thenewsworthy.com. From the homepage, click Episodes, and then find today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 in the morning Eastern time. So we will chat again tomorrow. Have a great day.